My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today's video is entitled, He was going to die anyway. This is a story about what we still get wrong in medicine. So today I wanted to share something personal, something that has stayed with me, not as a case, but as a scar. Because sometimes as doctors, the pain we feel isn't from losing a patient, but instead it's from watching the system lose sight of what it means to be human. So a few years ago, we admitted a patient with terminal lung cancer. He had maybe six weeks left. He was breathless, uncomfortable, and had fluid building up around his heart, a condition called a pericardial effusion. This is a common complication when you have terminal lung cancer. He'd already had it drained once with a needle, but the fluid was building up again and it was building up fast. So the plan was clear. We needed to refer him to our local cardiothoracic team to create a small hole in the lining of the heart. This is called a pericardial window. It is a simple procedure that would then let the fluid drain continuously, and it would be a good way to stop the cycle of emergency admissions and let him go home. Go home to die, yes, but to die with dignity, with breath, and with his family. So we referred him to our uh, thoracic centre and they accepted him. So the thoracic centre was in another location uh, and they accepted him. And then the silence began. So we waited a few days. We heard nothing from them. We chased. Uh, we spoke to a doctor on the other side. He said, oh, do an ultrasound scan. We said, we've already done one. He said, that was a few days ago. Do another one. So we said, OK, we'll do it. We did it. We sent them the results. We heard nothing. We chased again. A few days later, we made contact again and we spoke to another doctor. The other doctor said, oh, well, do a CT scan. It didn't make sense. We, we'd already done an ultrasound, but we decided that we would go along with that. So we arranged it and we contacted them again. And then we spoke to a third doctor who said, oh, do another echocardiogram. Well, we said, well, he's already had to, but they said, oh, those were a few days ago, do another one. So we complied. And this went on and on. More scans, more delays, more people. Each time someone knew. Each time the story restarted. And then came the final instruction. Well, stick a needle in his chest first. And then if it builds up again, we'll take him. And I said, but that's the whole reason he was admitted, to avoid the needle, to go home, to be spared more pain, to have something simple and humane. So whilst I was on the phone, the nurse came and she said, uh, the patient wants to speak to you. So I went to see the patient and the patient looked at me and said, they gave me six weeks to live and you've already taken two of them up. I'm lying here in hospital while my family is at home and no one seems to care. And he was right. He was absolutely right. It broke me. Not because I hadn't tried, but because in a system this big, this indifferent, this procedural, caring wasn't enough. He had become a task, an email, an inconvenience to be triaged, not a man preparing to die. So eventually, out of frustration, I contacted a different centre and they took him, did the procedure and he went home. He died a few days later, but in his own bed and in peace. And for doing that, for bypassing the original team that delayed, for writing a letter of concern, I was disciplined. They said I was rude. They said he was going to die anyway. They said I had upset people. But here's the thing. I knew he was going to die. That's exactly why I fought so hard, because how he died still mattered. So this isn't about blame. It's not about one department or one trust. It's about a culture that forgets what patients really need, especially when time is short. This man did not need another scan. He did not need another discussion. He did not need another gatekeeper. He needed a system that recognized urgency, not just in survival, but in dignity. He needed doctors who weren't afraid to care, who didn't just ask, what's the guideline? but asked, what does this man need today to live these last days well? So to my colleagues, I say this with humility and care. Sometimes we get so bound by roles, referrals, 
and red tape that we forget the person at the center. Sometimes the easiest decision to delay is the cruelest. And sometimes those who speak up are labeled difficult when all they want was for a man to die at home. We need to do better, not because we can always save, but because we can always care. And to that man, I want to say, I never forgot you. You taught me something no textbook ever could.